Yes guys, welcome back to the channel and today's video, we're gonna do five holes here, at Aphrodite Hills. I'm down here with some clients, there's 20 of us on a golf trip and we're playing this incredible golf course. We're also playing Secret Valley Golf Course, which is just next door. So gonna bring you as much content from the week as possible. But today's video, course vlog, last five holes of Aphrodite Hills. Let's see how low or high we can go. All right, to get us kickstarter we're on the 14th hole, I've gone from the forward tee, so it's only a short one, 275. So I'm gonna hit a little six nine down to the corner and then we're gonna go from there. Also, what I've got with us today is the new Arcos Link. So we're gonna talk you through that in regards to stats and distances. It's also got the Arcos Caddy on there. I've been using it now for probably the last 10 rounds. So using it religiously as well. It's very, very good. So we're gonna hit down towards the corner, pick a line. Great backdrop with the houses and the sea. Little six iron down the middle, fairway finder, and we're away. Okay, so second shot, we've got 117 yards. So as I said, it's a short first hole, six iron off the tee. From the forward tee, there is a two more tees that we can go and play further back. So from here on in, we're gonna play off the very back tees. 140, 117 yards, flag is at the back of the green. So if I go over the back, this rough is thick, super, super thick. So. We do not want to miss the green. So we're going to literally hit this just left and short of the flag. Gives the uphill putt, potential birdie, but also negates away from actually making a bogey or worse because of knowing how thick the rough is. So we've got a little sand wedge. What's been really good so far about the Arcos is that with the stences in the top of the grip, every time I make connection with the ball, it registers a shot. It doesn't register when I'm doing my practice swing, so it's able to register the hit detection once the club has hit the ball. The only thing you ever need to do is add on your gimmies or your very short kind of one or, foot, one or two foot putts because it doesn't quite get the hit detection on those ones. That's the only editing at the end of a hole or at the end of a round you need to do. So. For me, I hate all that stuff, all that extra editing that you don't need to do. And actually it's been, it's been very, very good. Normally I'd just give up, but no, this has been really good. Okay, so slightly into the wind, 117, a little 54 degree. A shadow on my golf ball from the camera lady. <laughs> oh, nice strike. All over the flag. Oh, it's short the green. Great start. Okay, we're chipping. Okay, it's got 58 degree. Like to go a little bit higher. These golf courses are relatively firm, so I can get a little bit of spin and then a little bit of release as the ball comes out. I tend to use the same wedge as often as possible to try and keep everything feeling quite familiar. Sometimes it, this shot kind of would suit a, maybe a 50 degree or a pitching wedge chip and run, but personally I struggle to then understand where to land the ball and how the ball is going to react. So I try and stick with one club and that will be much more consistent on the outcome. So I'm going to try and land this about three quarters of the way, hopefully next to the hole. Okay, not a bad shot. It's a little bit further away than I would like, to be honest. I mean, we've got three, got about five feet for par. So it's not an ideal opening hole for a 270 yard par four. Right. Hey, I'm not gonna miss this, am I? Come on, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. Nice chip, nice strike. Just carried it a little bit too far. On these putts, I always try and line the writing up on the golf ball to the hole or the line I wanna hit to. Once I'm outside of 10 feet, I don't. I feel like that just kind of makes it a bit more confusing. Don't like to be confused. It happens very easily. Okay, it's pretty straight. So we get a good stroke on this. Okay, so what was meant to be a really easy opening hole Started with a bogey. Okay, so second hole. Funnily enough, we played this hole yesterday from a forward tee 
and it was 220 yards of the flag because the flag was at the back. We're playing it off the very back tee now and it's 187 yards to the flag, so the flag's at the front. It gives you an indication of how big that green is. I'm actually playing it from a shorter distance of hole from further away. Work that one out. It's got 187 hitting out to the ocean. Got the shot, got the shape, just slightly overdone it. And we are in the green side. This is going well. Okay, so as I was saying, the grass is quite thick. So it's not heavy, it's just quite thick. So it's not even that long, but the ball just sits right down to the bottom of it. So ideally for this type of shot, I'm gonna need some sort of flop shot. But the grass is thick, the lie is not great. I've got a bunker in the way and not much green to work with. And what you'll always find from a bunker is if you go down the other side of the bunker, it's gonna be a down slope that the ball's gonna land on. So that's gonna shoot it forward. So. From a course management perspective here, going past the flag is fine because I've got a big slope behind the pin. And that will either slow the ball down or if the greens are super fast, maybe bring the ball back towards the flag. So I am in this situation, even now as a scratch golfer, I'm just thinking worst case scenario, bogey. So I'm gonna try and take a bit of a gamble on a bit of a, on a flop shot so I can try and stop the ball as fast as possible. I'm not gonna play a crazy Phil Mickelson-esque flop shot, just a kind of a, a safe-ish one, trying to make par, but making sure I don't go worse than bogey. Because if I start making doubles, that's when the score goes a bit crazy. So, what I'm gonna do, I've got a 58 degree, I'm gonna open the club face ever so slightly, so a very small amount. So if you put the club up in front of you like this, imagine the leading edge is at 12 o'clock. I'm just gonna turn it to one o'clock, okay? So I've added a tiny little bit of loft when I put the club down. I'm not gonna make an adjustment to my feet. I'm not gonna stand more open. I'm not gonna change my swing path. That's when it all just gets pointlessly complicated. So I'm gonna make very small adjustments to add a little bit of extra loft and a bit more spin for when the ball lands. So, I talk a good game. Now I've gotta back it up. So I'm gonna get the club face slightly open. I've got the ball position in, inside of my left heel. I'm just gonna try and, I'm not gonna swing it fast, but I'm gonna swing the club longer into the backswing so i'll create a bit more height a little bit more angle of attack down into the ball and we know that when we hit down on the ball it helps the ball go up right let's see what we got so ball position forward club face open i've got my hands as well to the slap as i look down slightly to the right of the golf ball again helping me with a little bit of additional loft loads of height soft landing just past the flag and it's just been stopped by the backstop and that really shouldn't be any more than a two foot worst case scenario i'm making bogey so from this sort of distance i don't line the writing of the golf ball up because i think it always makes it a little bit more confusing once you get over it or your optical illusions and your slopes it just looks very strange so i'm going to aim this putter left of the hole left to right put Coming down the hill, probably going to give it about a foot to the left. Try that actually. Foot to the left. Greens are unbelievable. Pure, rolling perfectly, and they're really nice speed as well. Oh, can hit it. Okay, so we have started. Grab someone's pitch mark. Or it might even be on my, or it might even be mine. We've started. Bogey, bogey. But the most important thing about this video is that we're learning. Also, if you've liked, if you enjoyed the content, what do you do, Kim? Like and subscribe. There you go.